Last time on Doki Doki Literature Club. He. <laughs> this is so funny. So. <coughs> now how much time? I guess we could do one more. Oh, let's see. Mm. <coughs> Another day passes. It's time for the club meeting already. Got a little more comfortable over here the past couple days. And the club room is the usual scene greets me. Hi, Brayden. Yo, Siri. Looks like you're in the mood today. He. I'm just still not used to being in this in the club. After that's all. I see. That's a pretty civil thing to get you in a good mood. I guess it's always civil things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. They come to be by a snack? No thanks. Eh? That's that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Yuri? Eh? Why that all of a sudden? No reason. No reason really. Just want to look at it. Uh. Siri so nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the hatch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets the contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Siori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, then you would have brought a stack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you, you plan to conveniently forget that it's something you spent all your money so that would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so, at least with the one option. I give up! Don't make me feel guilty! Feel guilty? That means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Here's suddenly giggles. Huh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. The face is in her book as always. Uh -huh. I, I wasn't listening or anything. I was just... something in my book. Yuri! Tell Brian to let me borrow some money! That's... Don't get me involved like that, Siri. Besides... You should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after putting a mischievous little stuff like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Uh, I just... I, I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. Uh, <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That! Still coming from you, Siri. I guess there's a little devil inside of all of us, isn't there? Hee <laughs> hee. Don't let her fool you. Siri knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But bet, you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes, so I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Siri. Hee <laughs> <laughs> Ah! <laughs> I've no word. Something, make something smacks Siri in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was... Eh? A, a cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Siri glances around. Is, is this a miracle? Because I paid my restitution? Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you. But I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> Natsuki, that's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Siri hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Siri rapidly turns over the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good! Mm. So you suddenly cuts her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Uh, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> so he gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki and wraps her arms around her. Jeez, uh, I get it, I get it. Cookie's still in hand, it's like reaches up to nudge Siri off of her. Um! Siri suddenly leans down and takes a, a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Hey, hey, do you just seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Siri trots away to safely. You and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're just you're such a kid sometimes. When you continue so, Siri. Uh? Natsuki glances around. Monica is in the club room. Uh, where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have you ever heard anything about her being late today? Not me! Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. Pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Eh, <laughs> that's true. Excuse me? 
The door seems open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Oh, there you are. Looks like everyone's already settled down. Sarah somehow has already finished her entire cookie. Mary's back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Brayden, Brayden! Surely suddenly comes up to me. I'm gonna get some supplies from another classroom. Wanna come with me? Supplies? What for? Well, you know, for the, how the festival's coming up. Me and Monica are gonna make some posters and stuff. So I need to go find some crayons and markers and glue stickers. Oh, uh, I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Yay! Okay, Monica, we'll be back soon. Are, are you going with Brayden to get supplies? No need to trouble yourself. I'd be happy to go with him. Oh, but I wanted to go. So much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. It was just a suggestion. See if you can find a post paper too, okay? Okay. Ready, Brayden? Yep, let's go. <coughs> Sarah and I exit the club room. I follow behind Sarah, he hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly, it looks like I'm talking to a kid to the mall or something. Taking a kid to a mall. Sorry, finds pleasure with the simplest things sometimes. Hey, Siri. I knew it. Stupid phone! Stop it. What exactly are you doing? Are we doing for the festival anyway? I'm not sure how you would make an event out of literature. Hey, <laughs> me and Monica have it all planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yep. We're gonna do a poetry performance. A performance? Of what kind? Well, everyone's gonna take turns on stage and recite their favorite poems. Uh, that sounds kind of dull. Brayden, you're not thinking about it the right way at all. It's not just about reading poems, it's about performing them. Like you say the lines of poem like, Between my feet, the last remaining flower beckons to me. I twist the stem, free it from its clinging roots, caressing the final joyous moments between my fingers. But to what ends I have summoned this joy? For now, when I look into every direction, the once proprietors feel before me is but a barren wasteland. Like that. Siri, how do I put this? I'm sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Eh, you meanie. I'm working super hard on this, you know. Oh, uh, I know, I know. I just meant that it's pretty on a contrast to your cute self. Eh, don't say that, it's embarrassing. I guess that means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, I'm so excited! This is going to be so much fun! So he spins herself around the hallway again. Hey Brayden, this classroom is over here is empty! Let's begin the mission! The mission, huh? It's been a long time since I spent time with Siri like this. In the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She's nothing but a ball of sunshine, drawing happy vibes from the world around her. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As the years went by, I began to hold myself up in, a, in my room more and more. So going adventure, adventuring with Siri brings out a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. Two of us enter the classroom. Sorry, sorry, head straight to the closet, and I follow. Let's see what we have in here. Crayons! Sorry pulls a box of crayons from the shelf. They're the best brand, too! They're kind of dirty, though. Sorry starts pulling various crayons out of the box, reading the color names. Alright, this, this, that one's down. Don't get distracted, we still need to find... Wait, I'm looking for my favorite color! Fine, fine. Now at least move aside so I can look for a poster paper. Look, I dropped one by accident. Yeah! Sorry bends over, smacks her forehead right into the shelf. She falls to the floor and the crayons spill all over her lap. Ow, 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 ow! You okay? My forehead! Siri clutches her forehead. Jeez, Siri. That's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. The Siri sitting on the floor, grab her by the waist and pull her out of the closet. You have to move your hands, Siri. But it hurts! Just do it for a second. Siri slowly reaches her hand from the forehead. See, this is the second CG. I gently brush her bangs to the side. Ow! Sorry. There's a huge red mark at the center of her forehead. Love is starting to form as well. Man, that's gonna swell up. I should find you some ice. Brayden? Where would I even find ice around this time? Uh, I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to! I'm fine with looking like a unicorn! Even wincing from the pain, she already makes a silly jo joke. <laughs> what are you saying? I'll be right back, okay? Uh, okay. Pat Sierra on the shoulder and run out into the hallway. I locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? Doesn't really matter since I'll be used as an ice pack rather than a drink. But I know Sierra likes apple juice, so I purchased that one. Just a moment, I'm already returning to class where I left Sierra. She has a palm on her forehead and she's using the other hand to clumsily scoop crayons back into the box. 
<laughs> At least they were already in the wrong spots before I spilled them. See, right here. And sorry, that bottle of apple juice. It's nice and cold. Siri opens the cab and starts drinking from it. Siri, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, idiot. Uh, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> How hard did you hit your head? Siri plays the ball against the bubble on her head. It stings. Just bear with it. It'll feel better soon. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayons. That's so, that's, so that's good. Hey, Brayden. This kind of reminds you of growing up, doesn't it? Huh? What do you mean? You know, how I used to play outside all the time. I'd always try to keep up with you. You're kind of oblivious in some ways. Like, I usually fall behind or I had trouble climbing on things you did. But sometimes when I tried to do things I couldn't, I could get myself hurt. I'd fall and scrape myself or get a bump. And I would start crying really hard. <laughs> and you would rush over as quick as you could. You'd try really hard to get me to stop crying. Almost like you blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Even though it wasn't your fault at all, you know? Did I really do that? Yeah, you don't remember? Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I was always too focused on my games and I didn't pay enough attention to you. So in a way, it was my fault. Kind of like mine. Kind of like this time, too. If I wasn't rushing you out in the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. Brayden, I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years, you're rushing to help me even though I'm just being clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. D don't call me that. I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. <laughs> I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. I guess that's what happens when you're being friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right. Brayden, I'm so glad that there's nothing changed between us. Do you think you'll be like this forever? Forever? If I'm honest with myself, there's nothing no telling where I each end up for college or after that. So it'd be fair for me to make any promises. But, well, I hope so. It's been this long already, right? I can imagine ever changing, so my hopes are up. I'm so happy. <coughs> Sarah has a whimsical expression in her eyes. You remain silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside that when I see her deep in thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should go back. I don't want to worry Monica, you know? Good luck with that. Just gonna see her forehead either way. Not if I hide it under my bangs! Sarah hops to her feet. Uh, uh. She clutches her forehead again. Don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. Uh. Well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. <laughs> I follow Sarah out of the classroom. Sarah plays with her blinds to try to hide the bump without much success. In the moment, we make it back to the club room. Oh, you're back. Yo, time it. I was about ready to start with sharing our poems. Huh? Siri, your forehead. She's fine, don't worry about. I was playing with the crayons and smacked my forehead into the shelf. Well, anyway, were you able to find anything we needed? Uh huh? I have it right. Huh? So your feather glances around herself. I forgot all the stuff! Calm down, Siri. I have it all right here. I found the poster paper, too. <laughs> Since again, I ended up doing all the work, Raiden. Oh, uh, well, Siori. I failed to come up with an excuse for Siori. I made it an adventure! Yeah, that. Uh, okay, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too! Okay, everyone. Are ready to share your poems? I guess I should grab mine. I have to make sure the crayon box is closed tightly. I return to my seat. Okay, and that's gonna be the other episode. So next episode, uh, we're gonna have Siri confess her love to us. Uh... Or we confess to her. I, I think it's the other way around. I don't know. <coughs> but yeah. <laughs>